Hi there, I'm Andrew Bonnell, and today let's look at FMA. Does force equal mass times acceleration? Let's see. There we go. All right, here we are to the applet for the day. So this big blue object represents a giant wall, and here we got here we got a ball um, that represents a mass, and we have a spring. We can adjust the initial velocity, we can adjust the mass of the ball, and we can also adjust the spring constant. I'm going to have you do that. Eh, let's see, I want to go to 0.9 today. Maybe a little bit more for the mass, and maybe a little bit more for the, the spring. But go ahead and choose your own settings. Now, go ahead and click play, and watch it go. The spring goes toward the wall, compresses, and bounces back. You could also imagine just a soft tennis ball, or um, some other rubber ball. If you throw it at the wall, it gets squished a little bit and then comes back. Once it's done, you can control A or command A, command C, and I already have an Excel open right here. We're actually going to paste this over a couple cells. Uh, now I just forgot which one. Oh, this one, I believe. Nope. Yep. One down. Paste. Okay. Now we're supposed to put in the mass in this column, and then the uh, spring k, and then the uh, velocity. Go ahead and don't forget units. Mass is in uh, kilograms. Spring k is in newtons per meter. And velocity is meters per second. And my applet, I had a, uh, let's see, where'd it go? There it is. I had 1.2 then uh, 8, and then 0.9 for me. I hope you had something different. Now, right here, I accidentally copied and pasted that in the wrong place, and so um, I'm going to go Control-X, and I'm just going to paste it over one, Control-V. Another way you could do it is move this to the side, to an edge, and drag it. You'll do that just, uh, just a little later. This column is going to be index, and we're going to do 1, 2, 3. Highlight those three boxes, and... Excel knows to count it down. Next column is time, and this is position of x, and then this one is uh, the force from the force sensor. Time is in seconds, position of x is in meters, and the force sensor is in newtons. Okay, so what's next? Well, next we're going to just plot 3 to see that it looks the same um, as it did before. So I'm going to click there, I'm going to click the scatter plot. Yep, that looks the same. Now, if you want to, right now, you can make the point smaller, or we can do it a little bit later. Um, but that looks the same as the graph from, or the two graphs, I should say. Uh, what just happened to my graph? This one? Nope. This one? Nope. <laughs> it's not showing up. Nope. Oh, there they are. They just showed up in a place I wasn't expecting. And so you can see uh, the red ball position and the blue force sensor. Okay, back to Excel sheet. Now, the, the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to move this off to the side for a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is estimate the error in the force. To do that, I'm going to click on the force, and I'm going to just make a scatter plot. When we don't include an x, it includes the index. So do you see the index right along here? It includes the index of, um, of the, um, the data. So, for example, if I go right here to 0.123, that's before the curve, but I'm going to show you what it looks like if you do it wrong, and this is 0.139, or let's go to 140, maybe easier. Now I'm going to click on the data in the graph, and see this last 602 number? I'm going to change that to 140. Now you really need to change it to something that's after your number, and notice right here I have some data points that fall down, and that's not what we want. We want to find the standard deviation of the points before the collision starts. So, once again, I'm going to click on the data. I'm going to go down just a little bit. Let's say 130. And now I have a nice uh, spread of points. Now, looking at this, you're going to guess what your standard deviation is. Remember, you got to imagine a ribbon drawn on here where two-thirds of the points are inside and one-third are outside. My guess uh, guess, force, error, I'm going to say mine is going to be 0 0.012, but 
you take a look at yours and see what um, what you think. Oh, wait, that's 0 0.012. Okay, I'm going to drag that down a little bit, and we're going to find out what the error of the force actually is. So E underscore force, and that's in Newtons. Now I'm going to say equals ST def of this first cell, and then I'm going to go down to the number I picked, uh, and that was going to be G130. And I'm going to add dollar signs to both of these, dollar signs. Uh, F4 or Command T and click Enter. That way when I copy it down it keeps just giving the standard deviation of that number all the way down. There we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is let's see it doesn't really say say it but this I'm going to just put a note right here and say um, before collision and that's going to be uh, index and that's going to be 130. Okay. Now, in the next column, we're going to, uh, in the next two columns, we're going to take the first and second derivative, which is just finding the slope between, uh, it's just finding the slope of the position with respect to time, and then finding the slope of velocity with respect to time. So let's do that. Velocity, that's meters, oh, and this one's acceleration. And now velocity is meters per second, and acceleration is meters per second squared. Now, I recommend to, to put your formula in this first cell, and I recommend that so that you can remember to delete the top and the bottom cells. So always just put this formula uh, in and include this weird thing where we're actually going to subtract the m for mass off of that, and that's going to remind us that we have to delete the bottom and the top. And then once again, we need a parenthesis, and then uh, minus the seconds. And that first one, like I said, it won't come back correctly, but the rest of them will except for the bottom one. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to hold Control Shift down or Command Shift down. And I'm going to come down here and click on this cell and click in the cell and see, aha, it doesn't include, uh, it includes a blank value, so I got to delete that value. And then Command and Control Shift up and up again. Now for acceleration, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say equals parenthesis, one after, minus one before, divided by parenthesis, one after in time, minus one before in time. And it's going to give us bad values now for the top two. So I'm going to delete the top two, command shift down, and I'm going to delete the bottom two. And shift up. Now we're going to copy this graph right here. I'm going to say Control C, and I'm going to paste it in. Like I'm just going to highlight a cell so the graph's not highlighted, and I'm just going to paste it. Now I'm going to say guess in not the error of the force. I'm going to say guess in. Uh, uh, oops, I actually spelled that all wrong and all that kind of stuff. Oops. Anyways, um, error in acceleration. Error. And we're going to make uh, we're going to make a guess, but we first have to select the right data. So I'm going to drag this over, and I'm going to drag this over, and I'm going to look down at the graph. And this one looks a little bit bigger. This one looks a little bit bigger. So I'm going to say 0 0.08 for me, but yours might be different depending on what velocity you chose. So I'm going to say 0 0.08 and then meters per second, and delete the newtons. Okay, let's find out what it really is. So this is going to be error in acceleration, and I can just copy and paste this cell, and down here I'm going to say equals um, stdef, and I'm going to click on that cell, and then colon, and I look back over and remember that it was, it was 130, so J130 for me, close off the parentheses, and I almost forgot to add in the dollar signs again, but not quite. So hey, look, my guess was just right on.
And if we wanted to, we could round that digit. We could also round, um, we could also round this digit one. Now, please note, go back to the bottom. It copied it all the way down, and we want to delete those. So I just move back to the top. The next thing we're going to calculate is mass times acceleration. So ma, and then the error in ma, and that's going to be in kilograms meters per second squared, which is also a newton. Instructions say all come down all the way down to here, and we're going to equal that one times by our mass, which is in A3. But we don't want the A3 to move down, so we're going to press F4 or Command T, and then we're going to copy that down. Next, uh, we're going to do the same thing, but for the error in the mass. So we're going to say equals this number, and then we're going to times it by that number in F4 and Command T, add in the dollar signs, and then we're going to copy that down. Now, if you have some zeros up here, make sure you delete those. And also, when you have zeros down here, make sure to delete those. Now, if you want to know how I quickly move up and down, it's Command, Shift, and then up arrow, and Command, Shift, and down arrow, uh, or Control, Shift, up arrow, Control, Shift, down arrow. Now, the next thing says to edit, to change this by changing one of the sets of data. So I'm going to drag this over all the way to MA, and then I'm going to drag this over all the way to MA, and then hit Enter. And once I do that, now I have a graph that has a dip in it. Oh, but my selection is being a little bit weird. Now we got to make this graph a little bit prettier, so I'm going to say like Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. And then we're going to select one of the series of points, and we're going to go to the paint can, marker, and then marker options, built in, and make them as small as you can go. Now, I just selected the other set, but if for some reason it only makes one point smaller, you can go either on a Windows, you can click on this drop down box and select the other set, or uh, you can also go onto Format tab and up here in this little drop down box. So I first made the force smaller, and now I need to make the mass times acceleration smaller, the blue dots. So built in. Now on an Apple, this is your only option on the format and then series N. Now we need to add in some error bars. And I'm going to drag this over just a little bit so I can see the error in the acceleration and the error in the mass and the error in the velocity. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to choose First, my force, and then I'm going to come over to Design and click this Add Chart Element. The other option is if the graph is selected, there might be a little plus over there, but I'm just going to do it this way, and then Error Bars. And you might not have Error Bar options on your version, and so I'm just going to do Standard Error first, but then I, we got to go fix it. But first, we need to come over and take a look that it actually added X and Y Error Bars. We don't want that, so we select it. And we hit the delete button and it will delete the x error bars now we choose the y error bars force y y error bars and we click on the three bars and we scroll down and we do a custom and specify value look at how it got really big it changed it to one but we really want 0.9 that's not quite right is it oh that's not right because we want 0 0.012 for me so i'm just going to Select that top cell, and then come down in the next cell, and delete what's in that box, and then select OK. There we go. We've added some really small error bars to that plot. Now we need to do the same thing for the force. Now if you can't quite click on it again, once again you can click this drop down, or you can select the series from the Format tab. Now we go back to Design, and we add Chart Element again, and we're going to do error bars. And this time I'm going to do more error bar options, just in case you have that option. And then we're going to go to Custom, Specify Value, and I'm just going to click on this top cell, and then I'm going to delete this one and click on the bottom cell, and click OK. Now it looks OK, but it has all these big error bars, so I can just click and click Delete, or Control-Z, 
I can go to the format once again and click this drop down and select it that way and then click delete. Okay, so to make this chart a little bit better, we have to add in a few more things. We have to add in axis titles and we also have to add in, um, we have to zoom in. So to add axis titles, I'll show you that this is a little plus right there, but you can also do design and add chart element there. This time I'm going to click right here and do axis titles. Now the first one is selected right there, and I'm just going to select it. I could type it in sideways, but I'm just going to do it up here in the, the bar. And I'm going to say F and M times A, F and M times A, and the units are in Newtons. And when I hit enter, it's going to just change that. Now this time I'm going to edit it from down here. I'm just going to highlight the text. I'm going to do time, and the units are seconds. Okay. Now, um, the instructions say to zoom into a little piece, and so I'm going to zoom in between one and three seconds. To do that, I'm going to double click on the two, or the, the time, I'm going to, uh, sorry, the x-axis, the numbers of the x-axis, and then I'm going to click on the bars, x-axis, and I'm going to zoom in, let's see, I said one and three. There we go. Now I zoomed in. I look closely. I can see lots of error bars. Not all of them cross. Some of them cross, but not all of them cross. Now, just right here, I'm going to make the major unit just a little bit smaller, 0.2, um, just so I can see the grids a little bit better. Okay. Now I got my title columns. I got all that. Great. Now the next step is we need to zoom in on about two tenths of a second down here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, click on the graph, control C. Now I'm going to go to the left a little bit. I'm going to arrow over and let's say that cell. I'm going to control V. I'm going to change the title. Zoomed. All right, I'm going to arrow over just a little bit more. Now I'm going to say I'm going to zoom into maybe this section right here. It's about two tenths of a second. So I see I'm going to make my lower x 1.8, my higher x 2. When I do that, it's this group right here. And then that's about negative two and a half to three on the y axis. So I'm going to select that. Now I'm going to, on the second one, go to 1.8 to 2. Okay. Now I see those error bars, but they're really small. So I'm going to double click over here. And I'm going to say it's just a little bit above 2.5. And remember here that the bigger number is the minimum. So I'm going to say 3. And then down here maximum, I'm going to say maybe 1, no, 2.3. Negative 2.3. To make the error bars nice and big so we can see them. Now looking closely, we can see that some of the error bars cross. A lot of them cross. Some of them don't. Um, how many error bars cross? How many should? And that's it for today's experiment. You're going to need to turn in these two graphs, and but don't forget to read the post-lab assignment at the end of the experiment. Don't forget to review the checklist as you're writing out uh, your summary results. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.